to my savior No more pain, no danger This is the moment I wait for I just want a well done Good and faithful servant
so grateful to know you And now you wanna let go Oh no, well just know That even though I can't really stop you And I'ma let you go ahead and do you I never take my eyes from above you uh, My love is always here for you Can't change it, that's just how I do Cause even though you say that you're leaving Believe me when you're ready to come back home
Your questions will be answered here in the Love Lab. So come on in. The doctor will see you now. It's the Love Lab. Yes, girl, yes. Like I was telling you yesterday. Yes. Yeah, girl, I, I just got in for work, but I need to hurry up. Yes. Yeah, girl, I got me a pizza. I got a notepad. Girl, just the way he tried to set me up, he getting set up too. <laughs> yeah, girl, he's at work, but I gotta hurry up. I gotta set up my whole little shindig, so I'm gonna have to call you back later. Oh, you need to tune in. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe too, because I don't even see you. Yeah, girl, you need to make sure you do that. Yeah, but we, we gonna get him tonight, because tonight it's all about the ladies. It's all about me. <laughs> yeah, girl, we gonna talk later. Let me set this up, I'll call you back. All right, bye. You know what time it is. Let's get into this love lab. you probably thought after the last time I came on that I wouldn't be back. Ladies, don't turn me off. Don't turn me off. I have some discussions that I'm going to do tonight that I think you're going to be excited to hear. Um, I think I'm going to, well, I'm not going to think. I know I'm going to talk mostly to the men, the men's, the men's, the men's, and trying to teach them how to relate to the women. I think it's only fair 
Last time I spoke to you was about the man, how to treat your man, and this week is going to be how to treat your woman. So men, sit back because I'm going to finally answer those questions that you all have been asking about why she acts the way she does. She is not crazy. I know you think she is, and sometimes she or me, we may seem like it, but there is a method to our madness. There's a reason why we behave the way we behave. So tonight, I'm going to talk about making it all about her. So men, you cannot afford to miss this. Don't turn it off. You need this information. If you want your relationship to finally make sense and get back on track, you got to hear this. And women, you're not crazy. I know sometimes you think that the way that you feel or you respond, you say, is this just me that feels this way or that's acting this way? No, you're not crazy. Most women, or the majority of the women, probably feel just like you. So let's go ahead and get started. I guess I'm going to have to say keep moving. Slide, slide, please. Make it all about her. Slide. Men, is this how you feel? When you with your girl, your wife, is this what you feel like? You don't know what to do? I mean, no matter what you do, it seems like the wrong thing. You don't know what to say. You don't know how to act. You try to do the right things, but no matter what it is, it seems like you just can't get through to her or you just can't understand her. Well, I'm going to help you. I'm going to answer a series of, series of questions on why does she? Why does she do what she do? I know you guys have been wondering why she acts the way she acts. Well, tonight, I'm going to let you in on a little secret, on some of our secrets, the inner workings of a woman. So why does she accuse you of not caring about her when you're, wor when you're working long hours to pro provide security for her and the kids? Why does she say she wants you around more, but also seems to not want nice things that can only come if you work more? Why does she say she doesn't feel close to you and you two are married are dating and you're in the same house. So you're in the same bed. Why does she say that? Why is it that she feels like you guys are not connecting? Why does she feel like you're not, that you, that you don't love her, that you don't care for her? Well, intellectually, logically, she knows it. Emotionally, uh, not so much. So we can know things intellectually, or logically, but when our emotions kick in, well, the emotions kind of override our logic sometimes. And that's not that we wanted to. I mean, come on, guys. We don't want to be emotional, but we are wired a certain way. And so don't hate us for it. Don't hate us for it. Just understand that we are wired differently than you are. So you can say you love me, you care for me in the morning. But by the evening time, I might need to hear that again because there could be some things that triggered me throughout the day that made me question or feel some kind of way. And so I need for you to repeat it. So next slide, please. The reason that she needs to hear that so much is because the number one need of a woman, that's me, is security. That's her number one need. Man, hear me on this. If your woman whether you're married or whether you're dating, does not feel secure in your relationship, dude, you're in for some trouble. You want to see the cray-cray come out? Make her feel insecure. You do not want your woman to feel insecure because that's her number one need. She needs, just like you need to be respected, she needs to feel secure in that relationship. And if you've done anything to make her feel some kind of way or to question that or to doubt that, oh my gosh, you're in for a rough, bumpy ride. Because for women, emotional security and closeness are far more important than financial security. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know you say, hey, I'm out working hard. I'm doing the dang thing. I'm bringing the money home. I'm bringing the bacon home. I'm taking care of the kids and the college funds. I'm doing all of that. I'm doing all of that. Why doesn't she, why doesn't she feel secure? Well, she doesn't feel secure because for her, emotional security trumps financial security. Ah, 
You didn't know that, did you? You thought because you were out there making the money and doing the dang thing that you were doing the right things. And you are doing the right things because we don't want no trifling man. We don't want no trifling boyfriend. And we definitely don't want no trifling husband. But if you're doing the financial but you're not taking care of the emotional, you're still missing the mark, man. You're still missing the mark. Because for women, security means that you're going to always be there for her. And closeness means that you're best friends. Now, if she doubts that, that you're going to be there for the long haul, uh, if she doubts that you, you that if something comes about that is really difficult in your relationship, that you're not going to stick, she's insecure. And like I said, it's not because she's weak or needy. It's just that we're wired a certain way. And security is something that we don't just want. It's something that we need. We need to be secure in a relationship. So whatever you do, men of God, Men, men's, 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 hear me. Don't do things that's going to contribute to her feeling insecure. Next slide, please. So what can you do, men? What can you do? You can realize that if she says she wants you around more, she's probably willing to downsize the lifestyle. So, so, so she'll, she'll do without some stuff. She'll do without the Gucci's and the, uh, well, I don't know if she'll do without the Gucci's because those are some nice purses. I mean, I got to get nice shoes and all that. But anyway, but I'm, I'm sure that if that was what was keeping you away from her, trying to make sure that she had the Gucci or the, what's some other things? Look, I don't, I don't even shop that much, so I don't really know. But anyway, um, all those name brand items that you think she needs or she wants, she, must, she would much rather have you in the home, you spending time with her. So since it's the little things that build security and closeness, those are the things that she needs for you to do. Okay, so for instance, I'm going to share my little thing. I love knowing that my husband is thinking about me throughout the day. So, you know, rather than bring me the, the send me some roses, even though I love roses, I love purple roses, but the thing that he could do for me is just to send me a little text. Hey, babe, I'm thinking about you. Hey, babe, how's your day going? Hey, just wanted to call and drop a little line, let you know I'm thinking about you. That Men of God will go a long way for a woman because it's letting her know that even though you're away from her and you're busy working and doing your things at the office or wherever you work, that you still have not forgotten about her. That fills up her emotional bank because we have an emotional bank. And if it ever becomes depleted, that's when we start acting a little cray cray. Okay, so you realize you don't have to stay in a bad job just because you think that we want you to be in the job to make money. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't care if you ain't got that job. Just make sure that we're okay. Make sure that our relationship is okay. Make sure that you're showing me that I'm your ace, boom, coon. I'm your number one priority under God. Make me know that. And if you don't make me know that, then I'm going to have, I'm going to be insecure. And when I start acting insecure or feeling insecure, then I start acting real strange. I start acting needy and, and clingy and, 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 and depressed and all of that crap because I'm insecure. Okay? Second question. Why does she ask, do you, do you love me? No. Even though you just said it this morning, why does she take your need for space as a signal that you're upset and trying to get away from her? And why does she want to talk about your relationship mostly at those times you least want to? Next slide. It's because women need, once again, reassurance. We need to be reassured. And as often as you can say it or do it, please reassure your woman. Women have an underlying insecurity about whether their man really loves them. We just kind of spoke on that need to know and without a shadow of a doubt that you're going to be in this relationship for the long haul. Now, I want to share something with you. Before I uh, did the PowerPoint for this particular little video, I did a little research because I didn't want you guys to just think that I was just sharing with you my thoughts and my feelings because I do have some thoughts and I do have some feelings, but I didn't want this to be about me. So I did some research on what it is that women really want to see if we're on the same page. And there's something I want to read. This is the best book ever. It's called For Men Only. Oh, my gosh. Men, if you really, 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 really want to fix your relationship, first of all, 
You need to buy the series from Dr. Moody. Fairy tales and relationships, that's a number one knock out the part. Toxic relationships, oh my gosh, you got to have it. So start with those. Start with those. But then I want you to tell you about this book. This book for men, it tells you what a woman wants or what she needs. And I want to read something because some things are just better read. I could say it, but some things you just have to hear in reading formation. Okay, dealing with security. What does security mean to her? Example, because I want you probably want examples. What does that mean? It means she feels that the two of you are close. She sees that you make time together a priority. Men of God, I know you're busy. I know you got things to do. I know you're taking care of the work of ministry because that is number one. But you have to make time with the girl. You have to make her feel like she is a priority, that she matters to you. That come heck or high water, you want to be with her. You want to be with her more than you want to be with somebody else or doing something else or what have you. Okay? She sees your commitment to her. Remember I said last, last time I spoke to you guys, I said that it's about a covenant, not convenience. When you're in a covenant, you're committed to that person. She needs to feel your commitment. Okay? She sees you're making an effort to provide. I said, you know, we don't want no trifling man. So these are the things that make her feel secure and to help build closeness. So, men, I know sometimes you think that if you, if you uh, take her out to dinner, an expensive dinner, steakhouse or whatever, you think you're doing the dang thing. But you know what would mean more to her? You know what would be more special to her? Is if as y'all are walking across the parking lot, you just reach over and grab her hand and you hold her hand and y'all walk together. That means a lot to her. I know it don't mean a lot to you. But it means a lot to her. It means that you care about her. You're giving her that little soft touch. Whip. Okay. Women need soft touches. Not groping. Not groping all the time. You know, groping, not groping can be fun. I ain't, gonna, I ain't, gonna, I ain't saying don't grope. But I'm saying, I'm saying that she needs the soft touches too. She needs to be, have, she needs to have you, have you hold her hands, give her a hug. Not a grope, not a, like, ah. Uh, you know, not, you're not crawling on, jumping her bones, but you're hugging her. It's just sitting together watching a movie. You're just cuddling. She needs. No, she doesn't just want. It's not just a want. It's a need. She needs those soft touches. And the men, I'm trying to help y'all. I, I'm trying to help you. Don't turn me off. Oh, my God. I got to do all that. Yes. If you want to keep your woman happy, if you want to keep your woman, these are some things that you're going to do. But she needs those soft touches. Now, I'm going to tell you this. I mentioned it before. When that insecurity is triggered, then you see the cray cray. I just, I have no better way to put it. You see the crazy side because she, she starts acting out of sorts. She's trying to say, hey, look at me. Hey, I'm doing this. Hey, do you love me? Hey, I did this for you. Hey, I'm over here. Hey, hey, you're going to leave me again. Oh my God, you're going to leave me again. Oh my God, you never spend time. She goes cray cray because something has triggered the insecurity. Men. Don't trigger the insecurity. Don't make her feel that something else is more important than she is. Not the job, not another person, not anything other than God. If God, you know, God is not, God is in the class all, all, all on his own. So we ain't gonna put God in here because God is just first in everything. But be, be, besides God, beyond God, below God, she needs to know that she is number one. Uno, not number two. We don't do well as number two. We don't do well as number two to your job. We don't do well as number two to your friends. We don't do well as number two to anything else in your life. So you've got to make her know that she's number one to you. She's your boo and that there's nothing else more important to you than her. Reassure her, man. Okay. Next slide, please. I, lo I love this picture. I love this picture. Yeah. She is leaning on him, and he's in front of her. Isn't that a good picture, y'all? Women, I know y'all love that picture. I know y'all do, because I love it. I'm like, I'm going to grow old with my man. I'm going to grow old with my man. This baby going to look. Right? Right? He's leading her, and she's leaning on him. And it says, I lead the way because I know you always have my back. Oh, <laughs> Do y'all not love that? I mean, is that not the sweetest thing ever? You want your man, this is women, women, you want your man to feel like you got his back. 
Oh, man of God. Man of God, when she feels like you look at her as your, as your, as your, uh, your, uh, partner, that you have her, ba- that, that she has your back. Do you know what that does to her? Oh my God. When my man say, Oh, I know my girl got my back. If ain't nobody else on my side, she's on my side. If ain't nobody else going to take care of me, she's going to take care of me. And when you s- express that man of God, when you express that to other men or around other women, <laughs> oh, I'm going to applaud you because she wants you to tell, she wants to know, she wants you to, she wants you to share with other people how you feel about her. She wants you to say and feel that she has your back. She wants to know that. Now, if she ain't doing the things that, that make you feel like she has your back, then we got a problem. Now, I hope she does do the things that make you feel like she has your back because I talked to her before and I told her what she needs to do. If she's not doing the things I told her to do, then you come talk to me. Well, no, don't come talk to me. But anyway, but she, wa- she wants to know that you feel like she has your back. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Now, I mean, I also know this. Let me say this. Sometimes we can do things that upset you. We know that. <laughs> we know that sometimes. Sometimes we make you mad. <laughs> sometimes we do things that just piss you off. Yeah, we know that. We know that. Sometimes we, we ask questions at the wrong time. Or we bring up subjects that you don't really want to talk about. You know, we know we do that. We know we do that. But sometimes, man, sometimes we're just being so nag, nag something's nagging us, and we just, whoa, we got to get it out. But I'm, I say that to say, I understand that sometimes you have to go in the cave. You need some space. Oh, but man of God. Oh, but when y'all say, I need some space, what we hear is, I don't want to be around you. I don't like you. I can't stand you. I don't want to be in the house with you. That's what we hear. That's what we hear. That's what we hear. Now, that's not what you mean. At least I hope that's not what you mean, but that's what we hear. If you're going, as you're trying to reassure her, if you need some space, if you need to go into your cave, which I know you do because when things are said and you, you're questioned, you need time to, to think. You need time to process. And so I understand that you need to go away. But if you need space, don't just leave and say, I got to go, deuces, I'm out. Let her know, hey, listen, I know we just had a fight. I know that we don't see eye to eye right now. But, and I need some time to go and process. But I'm just letting you know that this doesn't have anything to do with my love for you. I'm going away just to process, but I'll be back. I'm not leaving you. I am going to come back. As silly as that sounds, man, we need it. Now, I'm speaking about the majority of the women. Uh, some women out there who say, I don't care what you do. Go. Do what you want to do. It's your thing. Uh, it's your thing. Do what you want to do. Some women are like that. But for the majority of the women, we need to be reassured that even when we're in conflict, even when there's strife between us, you still care about me and you still love me. Okay? Next slide, please. Why do we behave this way? Because we're emotional. Women have an involuntary emotional pop-up that rises from the present or the past. Now, this is interesting because I know sometimes my husband uh, will be doing some stuff or just hanging out, and my demeanor will just change all of a sudden. I start feeling some kind of way. And you know what? He knows when when it happens. He sees my face change, and he knows that I'm irritated, but he won't know why. So all he sees is this inconsistent woman. One minute she was happy, now she's mad. I don't know what happened. All I know is something's wrong with her. We all know, man of God. What is going on is that your woman always has that, that, those files that are always open, like a computer. She has all of these files that are always open. She wants them to close. She would really desire that they were closed, but she's not able to just dismiss them, just to close them. She's not able to because of the way that she's wired. So she has all these files that are still open in the background. So let's say that you're out having dinner and there's a trigger. Something triggered her. She saw that you, um, oh, I don't know what you would do that would set her off, but you did something that just annoyed her. And it was a trigger to something that had happened in the past. So now that trigger made that pop-up come to the forefront. So now she's dealing with those emotional feelings. And what you see now is that the, the, the feelings that she's experiencing, you, you don't know that she had that pop-up, but that's, women don't forget stuff. You need to understand, women do not forget stuff. 
words that you're spoken, they could be as fresh 10 years later as they were when you first said them. If you told her that she was no good, trifling, jackass, and you wish you hadn't married her, even though you didn't mean it 10 years ago, she still remembers those words. Those words never go away. And the trick something triggers her, she hears the word jackass. And she remembers that 10 years ago, you said she was a trifling, no good jackass. And now her demeanor changes and she's, in some kind, she's feeling some kind of way. No man of God that when she changes, there's a reason something has triggered her. Women can't compartmentalize, just decide not to think about something. We can't do that. We can't do, men are good. You guys are good at just turning thoughts off. If you want to think about it, oh, shut it down. Shut it down. We can't do that. We would love to shut it down. So when your woman is going through something, it's not that she doesn't want to stop thinking about it. It doesn't, it's not that she doesn't want to close those files. It's just that it's just that she's not always able to do so, like you. So just be a little understanding. Know that she has all these files that are still open. She's not crazy. She just has open files. And until those files, until something's done to resolve those open files, men of God, they're going to keep popping up to the forefront. Know that. So the best thing that you can do is when she has an issue or a concern, listen to her. Let her get it out and try and get it resolved. Because I assure you, as I'm sitting here today, if it's left unresolved, it is surely going to come up again. You don't know when, you don't know how long it's going to be, but I'm assuring you that it will come up again. So give her the room to talk and to share and to get things out. Give her that listening ear. Next slide, please. So what should you do? What, the worst thing that you can tell a woman, the worst thing that you can tell a woman is to just get over it. Just take your mind somewhere else. Just don't think about it. What? Did you just tell me to not think about it? Now, that works for you, man, because of the way that you're wired. But it doesn't work for women. We can't just not think about it. That's physically and mentally impossible for most women. And I'm not just saying it because it's the way that I respond. I told you guys that I did some research. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the majority of the women feel the same way. Help her close those windows by encouraging her to take whatever action is necessary to resolve her concern. Help her. Help her. If you love her, help her. Oh, I'm going to take a pause. There was something I wanted to tell you guys before I got started. So I'll put a pen in where I am and let me share this with you. My apostle told me years and years ago, he said two things. He said, in a relationship, you should, you should seek to understand not be understood. If both parties are seeking to understand the other person, things are going to work out. Things are going to work out. That's the first thing I want to tell you. And the second thing I want to tell you is know that the woman that you have now, you helped create. Oh my gosh. What do you mean? What do you mean, Felicia Moody? What are you saying? When my apostle told me years ago, he, he said, Women are like flowers, plants. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to think about your girl or your wife when you first met her. What was she like? Was she strong? Was she sweet? Was she confident? Was she loving? What was she like? Think about that. Now, I want you to think about your girl or your wife as she is now. Is she the same way? Or has she changed? Whatever she looks like now, whatever she's become, you have helped her to become. So if you look at your, your plant, and at one time when you got it, it was all green and pretty and blossoming and beautiful, and now you look at your plant and all the leaves are dead and she's brown and, it's, and, it's, and, and it looks like it's just not going to survive, know that whatever your plant looks, at, looks like right now, you help to create. So know that, your, now know that your actions contribute to what she becomes. Now, you can't make nobody do anything. You can't make a person do anything. But the way you talk to her, the way you treat her, makes a difference. So if you want 
your flower to remain beautiful and blossoming, then you got to give her the right things. That's what I wanted to say. So anyway, next slide. Take a pen out. We go back to why does she? Why does she say, just do what you want? When she means, you better not. Why does she, after a great evening, get upset about something minor, then put her flannel nightgown on, the one that might, the one that might as well say, keep your dirty hairy paws off. Or why does she pull away when she wants you to pursue her? Next slide, please. She simply needs to be decoded. You got to study your girl. You got to study your wife. Let me, a little secret. Her actions are not just random. She doesn't just be, become inconsistent. If you study her, you will begin to see some things that are triggering her. You will learn her triggers. You will learn the things that, uh, that are going to put her over the top, some things that are going to put her in a bad mood, some things that are going to be hurtful to her. You're going to start noticing those things. And when you start to notice those things, then you can do things to help offset that. Your effort to figure her out and find out what's wrong relieves her insecurity and shows that you truly care. When you show her that you're trying to understand her, oh my gosh, that means the world to her. That means the world to her. You have to understand that there's always something underneath the action. Always. It's not, she's not doing something just because. Okay? Now, if you say to your girl or to your wife, hey, what's wrong? Talk to me. Share with me. I want to know what's going on inside your mind. I want you to pull me into your world. You say that to her, and she says, okay. What I'm thinking is blase, blase, blase. And then you start to defend. <laughs> start to explain why you did what you did. Why you said what you said. Why she's crazy. Why her thoughts don't make no sense. Why her emotions are all out of whack. Why she has no emotional intelligence. Oh, man, of God. Do you think that she's going to come back to you and want to open up and share it with you? If you're trying to decode her and understand her, you can't unless she's able to open up and share with you. And if you, sh if you shut her down like that, you can hang that up. She is going to start going impl imploding, going inside. She's going to just start stuffing. She's going to stop sharing with you because she feels like if she tries to share with you, eventually in that conversation, at some point, you are going to change and you are going to become defensive and you are going to start attacking her and then she's gonna make mm. so rather than go through that oh you will never know me because and you came to call me because I don't trust you to open up to you because I know the conversation is always going to end the same way so many God allow her the openness to talk to communicate women we need to talk now, I told the women last week, I don't know if it was last week, I told them in the last video at Last Love Lab that I did that she can't talk so much. So I'm working on her, man. I'm really working on her. I'm working with her. But when she wants to talk, please give her room to talk. We need to talk. That is how we feel close to you. That's how we, that's, that's, that's intimate for us. That conversation, being able to talk to you about anything anything I want to be able to, she wants to be able to share with you her fears without being judged her concerns without feeling weak all of that but if you shut her down when she's trying to talk to you you're never going to learn those little things about her what her triggers are what things make her happy what things make her sad and men of God don't hurt yourselves don't hurt yourselves and what I mean by that if you do things that's going to make her mad, it's going to piss her off, then it's just going to up up your environment. So when you come home, you got a funky environment because she's funked it up. And you know why she did that? Because of some things that you've done and not allowing her to express what those things are. So learn to decode your girl. Learn to be, let her be open 
and honest with you. Don't make her have to hide, okay? Because it's not gonna be beneficial to you. Like I told the women, you gotta know what you really, really want at the end of the day. And if you want that environment that's calm and relaxing when you get home, if you want the, the, the house to feel good and to feel relaxed where you can come home and, and just be you, just be you, then there are some things you gotta do. You gotta know your girl. Because if you don't know her, you're gonna keep in that effed up environment because you're gonna keep doing things that irritate her or that trigger her. And until she resolves those things, your environment is gonna be a, it's gonna be a war zone. That's the best way I can put it. It's gonna be a war zone. Next slide, please. I'm gonna repeat myself. This is my slide. Assume that there's a reason for the behavior. Whenever she's expressing an action, she's, she's acting a certain way, assume that there's a reason for it. This is what I was talking about learning her triggers. Know that something happened that turned the environment a different way. If she seems troubled, assume that I'm fine or whatever you want is not her final answer. So don't let it drop. <laughs> we want you to come and talk to us. Sometimes she can say, no, good, I got it. What that means is come talk to me. I need, I need you to give me your ear. I don't need you to judge me. I don't need you to defend. I need you to just gently ask what I'm really feeling and listen without getting defensive. You know, man, let me just say that. That's one of the, y'all, stop getting defensive. Sometimes when we talk to you, we're not, we don't, we're not trying to be critical. Sometimes there are just things that we need to share that you're doing that are bothering us. But if you get defensive, we're going to stop sharing. And if you stop sharing, you don't get to know us. So those are the things that you need to do. Next slide, please. Okay. Why does she, why does she say she doesn't want you to fix it? She just wants you to listen. And what does that mean anyway? Why does she say you're not listening when you've already been talking to her for half an hour? Guys, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. Okay, wait, 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 I'm thirsty. Wait, hold on. Oh, oh. <laughs> this, is, this is it. This is the secret. This is the secret. We just want you to listen. <laughs> we just want you to hear what we're feeling. Yes. You feel like, and I know that that's the way you're wired. But you know, we're wired a certain way, and I'm telling the women, they got to do certain things. Even though you're wired a certain way, you got to do what you got to do to make the relationship work. Man of God, let us talk. <laughs> let us talk. Please. You ain't going to fix everything. We just, when I want to share my story with you. I want you just to listen and be in tune. Not look for the answers. So turn, if you could just turn it off, but turn it down a little bit, that would be so helpful. And now, and, and, and man, I told you I share with the women that they can't talk a long time because you guys just don't, you don't want to keep listening. I, told, I, share with you, I share with them how when I, used, when I talked to my husband, this was not one of my strong suits where I could make things short. So because I wanted to tell my husband every detail, I wanted to tell him what the little witch was wearing when she said what she said to me. She was wearing a yellow dress and some red shoes that really didn't go together. And she was, and, and it was hot that day. And, and she was sweating. She had sweat stains under her arm. And that made her look even tackier. I want to give him all the details of my story. But I realized that you guys don't want that. You don't want that. You don't want all the details. I understand that. But don't shut us down. Don't, don't put a time limit on us all the time. Sometimes, man, you're going to have to just grit your teeth and bear it and let her talk. Not all the time. Not all the time. But sometimes you have to just let her go on and on and let her get it out. Because remember, she needs to get some resolve. And it benefits you if she can get some resolve because then she can close that file. But if she can't close that file, it's going to come up again. So, so listen, listen. Okay, so think about this. You can either let her talk and get it all out, or you can shut her down 
and say, okay, 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 okay. Look, it's been an hour and a half, or it's been, it's been 15 minutes. It's been 15 minutes. Surely you should have come to the conclusion 15 minutes ago. Just know that if you do that, you shut it down, it's not gone. It's not gone. It's just that foul just moved to the back for a second. But it's going to come back up. And whatever that trigger is, it'll be a trigger somewhere along the lines. That trigger is going to trigger that foul. And that foul is open all over again. She has to get resolved. So she says that. Next slide, please. She needs to feel that you're listening. That's it. When she has shared an emotional problem, as opposed to, say, the car has a flat tire, what she's feeling about the problem is actually more important than to her than the problem itself. And I see that typo right there. So in case you think that I can't read and can't type, I see it. But anyway, it's what she's feeling that's more important than what she's saying. She wants you to feel. See, that's, that's a connection. I know many guys, you said, I just want to fix the problem. But, but what's the problem? What's baby? What's the problem? Let me fix it for you. No. Your babe wants you to feel. Or not, you're not going to feel. I understand you're not going to feel. But she wants you to at least know, the, see the emotional part of the story, not just the facts. Okay? What she is feeling is actually the real problem. Therefore, listening to her feelings solves the problems. That's it. Listening to her feelings. That's what I'm trying to say. So rather than just listen to the words or the problem itself, listen to her feelings. That's emotional, man. I said, I know you think that I'm just saying this, but there has been some scientific evidence to back all of this up. Now, I'm not going to go into all the brain stuff and explain to you how women have more white brain matter, uh, uh, brain matter, men have more gray, but just suffice it to say that because of the way the brain is made up and where a woman is wired, this is, how she, this is how she feels. We're, we're emotional. And we understand, man, that you can only have one thing open at a time, and you go in deep on that one thing. But your girl has a whole bunch of things going on all at the same time. And, and it could pop up at any time, any time. So she wants you to listen to her feelings, not just the problem. Next slide, please. Look at this picture. Oh. That's the warm and fuzzies. Don't, don't you get the warm and fuzzies from that picture? Oh, it makes you feel good, doesn't it? Well, it makes the women feel good. <laughs> I don't know about you men. But anyway, what you should do, instead of filtering out her emotions to focus on the problem, learn to filter out the problem in order to focus on her feelings. Only how, after you've acknowledged her feelings will she want to focus on the solution. So, if you don't want to ever acknowledge her feelings or focus on her feelings, and you just try and get to the answer to make her go away, because that's you try, you, you know you try to make her go away. You just give her the answer so she can go. Well, when you do that, you've missed the mark. She wants you to acknowledge her feelings. Babe, I feel like blah, 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 blah. That's connection to her. She's connecting with you. She's sharing her feelings with you. Okay, so allow her to. Next slide. Next slide, please. Why does she? Okay, I need you to go back. There we go. Why does she? Okay, single, single men. Uh, mm, mm, close your ears. Single women. Mm, this, this is for this is for the married folk. Why does she rarely initiate sex? Why does she say she enjoys it but never seems to really want to start? Another type. I see that too. She doesn't really want to start it. Why does she say, not tonight, honey, but still claim that she finds you irresistible? <laughs> Why does she say she doesn't feel close enough for sex when it will bring you closer? Clap, <laughs> please. <laughs> Men. Men. It's because most women are physically wired to crave sex less than men do. But we do enjoy it. Okay, so we really do. We really do enjoy it, hands down. But we just don't crave it the same way that you do. You know, when most women, when most women avoid their husband's advances, it has nothing to do with his desirability. 
It has to do with the woman's physical differences, need for closeness in the relationship, and outside the bedroom, and need for anticipation, anticipated time. So what I'm saying, because I read that very, very quickly, what I'm saying is, in a nutshell, a woman is like, uh, let's see, a crock pot, not a microwave. So if you want to have sex with your woman, if you want to have her uh, initiate sex, if you want to, let's say, just, just spend more intimate time together, there are things that you have to do, man. You have to talk to her throughout the day. You start making love to her early on in the day. You drop a little hints. You make a few little phone calls. You, you, you do little, make a little innuendos. But you make, you, you do things outside of the bedroom. You don't just wait till you get home and you say, oh, let's turn it on. Let's do it. Let's do the dang thing. No, 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 no. A woman needs you to make love to her outside the bedroom. I told you, I love, love, love it when I get those little phone calls or little text messages throughout the day. Oh, baby, baby, baby. You can anticipate that the evening is going to end well because you've made me feel special. You, you've made me feel loved. So when you come home and you want to do something, it ain't no thing. I'm ready because you've already been initiated throughout the day. Okay? So it's not that we don't like sex. Women love sex. Your wife loves sex. So don't get hung up if she don't initiate it. Don't get hung up. If you initiate it, just, be, just enjoy the fact that she enjoys you and she desires you. Okay? So that's all my why does she. But since we have a little time left, I'm just going to share a few little things. We as women can be very complicated. We know that. Men, we know that you're simple. You know, what you say is what you mean. You ain't got to try and cut through, figure out. You ain't got to do any of that. But we women are a little bit more complex. And so you got to work a little harder to, to make things work. You got to work a little harder. And so what you want to do, men, is at, if I have said nothing else, you want to make her feel like she's your all in all. You want to make her feel like she's your partner. That if you had to choose her all over again, she would be your choice. The worst thing that you could tell a woman, or if you, if you want to make your girl or your wife insecure, tell her that if, if you had seen somebody else before her, there's always somebody else out there that you would have gotten had you met them sooner? Oh, dude, you in for a long haul. Remember, I said she don't forget stuff. She don't forget. She will never forget that. So that's a file that's going to be open for a minute. The fact that you, you just alluded to the fact that there may have been somebody else out there that you would have wanted if you had met them first. If you say that to her, you're going to have this underlying insecurity that's going to follow your relationship for a long time. Because she wants you to say, baby, if at the end of the day, if I had to do, if I had it to do all over again, I would have chosen you a thousand times. That's how you be a security in your woman. That's how you be a security in your girlfriend. You let them know that there's nothing else that's more important to them. And men, start to do the little things. It's the little things that minister to her. It's like I said, the hand holding, the, the, uh, oh, this is a good one. I think I might have touched on it just a little bit, but I'm going to drive it home since I have a little time. He, sh we, we want you to let people know that we're your trophy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We want you to let every man and woman, every woman out there that we are your trophy, that we are your partner. We are your, uh, your uh, sex partner, your uh, partner in ministry, um, your baby's mama. We are, we are what you need. And when you tell other people that in our presence, 
Oh, and they, look, look, and we look at the other women like, yeah, he said I was his trophy and I was what he needed. And he let you know that I am his good thing. It means something to a woman because you're saying that you're letting people know that she is your partner for life. And that is a promotional tank. Remember, what you want to do is make sure that her emotional tank is full. Whenever a woman's emotional tank starts running low, what am I going to say? It's going to bring out the cray-cray. It is. So you want to keep giving up, doing those little things that fill up her emotional tank. Because that's what's going to keep her even kill. That's what's going to make her the woman that you want her to become. If you want your girl to be less clingy, more independent, doing things more on her own, when a woman feels reassured, when she feels like there is nothing that she could ever do that's going to cause, a, cause you to walk away, when she feels like that, she can go ahead and do her stuff. She can go on, go on her long haul. She ain't going to be all up under you. She doesn't need to be. She's only clingy and, 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 and needy when she's insecure. You got to know that, man. All women, okay, married women. I'm going to talk to the married women. All the married women are not just insecure, needy, needy people. Sometimes it's simply because she's not feeling secure in her relationship. And it's, like I said, that's her number one need. Now, it ain't her number two need. And her number four need is her number one need. And if she doesn't get that need met, then you're not going to get the woman that you really want. And ultimately, you're not going to have the relationship that you really want. So, men of God, you got to make sure that you keep her reassured. Okay? Now, the last thing that I want to say is if you feel like your girl can never be what you want her to become if you're dating, then you don't want to wait five, six, seven years into the relationship to let her know that she's not the one for you. Don't keep a relationship going on if you know that you don't see her as your future mate. Because all you're doing is getting her feelings more involved, more entangled in you. And then when you try and walk away or in the relationship, after you've been in it for so long, you do a lot of damage. You do a lot of damage. So make sure that if you are dating someone and you know that she doesn't exhibit the qualities that you want, man of God, if you know that she's not the, the, the type of mother, if you know that, she, that you guys don't have the same uh, values, if you know that, and you will know early on, then you need to make sure that you don't lead her on. Make sure you don't lead her on. So, uh, now, I always say that I like to be a little personal and let you into my world. I love my husband. He does things that fill my emotional tank. Sometimes it's as simple as... Um, Buy me a charm for my charm bracelet. That's, that means something to me. Uh, one time he bought me this little charm. It had two little lovebirds. So just let me know he loves me. Men, like I said, simple things, little things, mean more to your woman than trying to buy her a new car. Even though buying her a new car would be an awesome thing. But she needs to know that you love her with the little things that you do. So, men of God, I hope that I've helped you. I hope that I've been a blessing to you. And I hope that, um, that you will look at your woman in a whole new light. Um, if there's anything that I can say beyond that, make sure that you show that you love her and make sure that she's secure in your relationship. Now, before I go, I started sharing with you earlier what a secure woman looks like or what makes her secure. And I don't want you to leave without some tangible things to help you. Okay. Oh, where's my page? Communication. Ah, make sure 
that you realize that communication is so vitally important, so vitally important. I didn't touch on that as much as I wanted to, but if you are not communicating with each other in your relationship, understand that your relationship will probably end on a bad note. Communication is key because only when you communicate do you get to know each other. You get to learn her. She gets to learn you. Seek to understand her. And woman, seek to understand him. It's not all about what you want and it's not all about what he wants. If you're going to a relationship making it all about you, then your relationship is going to be doomed. You have to think about the other person. And men, I know that I've said a lot tonight about loving your wife and making her, re reassuring her and so forth, but it's important. It's so important that in the Bible, Paul says, husbands, love your wives and live with her in an understanding way. I believe that that was said because he knew that women are difficult, we're complex, we're hard to understand. But you have to put the effort in to learning us and understanding us. Because if you simply make it all about you and what you want and you don't think about her and what she needs, then she's gonna always feel insecure. And when she feels insecure, then it makes it bad for you. It makes it very difficult for you guys to have a loving relationship that's going to be long lasting. So don't make everything about you. Try and see. She's not crazy. I know, men of God, you think that she is just off her rocker because she seems so inconsistent. She's not inconsistent. It may just seem that way, but I guess, like I said earlier, always know that there is something going on underneath. So be willing to communicate. Open communication is going to be the key to helping your relationship. If you close that off, if you shut her down, like I said before, then you're gonna have issues because if she get, doesn't get the chance to express herself, then she's gonna start stuffing everything and then she's eventually going to shut down. And like I said, once she shuts down, you cannot get to know who she really is. If you don't really know who she really is, then you can't learn to decode her. If you can decode her, your environment is not gonna be what you want it to be. We women understand that you guys want a pleasant place when you come home. We understand that. And we strive to try and make that for you. I personally, when my husband is gonna come home, I try to make sure that I have gotten his environment together. I've taken care of the kids. I've taken care of the house. When he walks in, I want there to be an ambiance to where it's pleasant. I want that for him. I want him to walk in and say, ha, ah, ah. ha. And I know oftentimes women, we say, well, why he got to come in and be so rough and gruff with me? Well, you want him to be able to be himself. You want that in your man. You want him to be able to come home and relax. If he feels like he has to perform for you, then he's not being himself. If he feels like, if he feels like your environment is not safe for him to come home to and relax in, then he's not going to want to come home. But men of God. Men of God, I also said that you can't do things that's going to trigger her and then expect her to be a certain way when you get home. That's the hardest thing, man. I'm, this is my personal, my personal plea. Make sure that you're not doing things that's going to frustrate her because she really wants you to have a pleasant place. She really does. She really wants you to come home and relax. But if she's all flustered because of some things that you've done through the day, then you're not gonna get that. And you don't ever wanna work against yourself. You don't wanna work against what you, what you really ultimately want. And what you ultimately want is a place of peace. Women of God, if I heard it once, I've heard it a thousand times. The man wants to come home and not have any stress. That's what he wants. And if you feel the need to always say everything that you think and everything that you feel all the time, whenever he gets home, then know that you're working against yourself. That's the problem with us, is that we do things that work against what we ultimately want. I was sharing with one young lady uh, who was very upset in her relationship. She was upset because she felt that her husband never wanted to come home. He never wanted to spend time with her. He never wanted to take her out. He never wanted to do things, fun things with her. But what she didn't understand was 
whenever he came home, she was throwing up. Not literally, but throwing up with her words. You don't do this. You don't do that. I want this. I desire this. And all of that was happening. So every time he came home, that's all he was hearing. That's all he was hearing. So I said, babe, if you want your relationship, if you want him to come home, if you want him to desire you, you have to make your place pleasant. And you have to give and take. Women, you can't say everything you want to say. If you want your man there, you got to be willing to, to suck up some things, to stifle some things, to just let some things go, to get him to, be ple to, get him to come home to be with you. And men of God, I said it again, don't do things that's going to frustrate her and keep her in a state that makes your environment unpleasant. We don't want to keep doing things that work against what we ultimately want, which is a loving relationship. Okay? So, now, uh, I think that we're at the point where we have questions. So, if you have anything that you want to ask me, um, I'm open. Oh, well, there we go. First lady, I hear you, but my wife is super needy no matter what I do. It's not enough. I call her every hour. If I skip an hour because of meetings, she accuses me of cheating. I only want my wife. What can I do to make her feel secure? If I recommend counseling, she's offended, but I think I'm dealing with her past hurts. You're most, dealing, you're most definitely dealing with her past hurts. There's apparently something that's going on underneath the surface that you've not discovered or that she's not shared with you. And so what you're going to have to do in, in this difficult man, it's difficult, I know it is, but you're going to have to keep probing gently, get her to open up, find out what those things are that's making her feel secure. I guarantee you there's something that has happened that has put her in an insecure state of mind. There's something, because most women who are whole, now, if you're not whole, then, you know, there needs to be some counseling. But if you're a whole woman, if she's whole, and she's acting this way, that means that there's something that's transparent in your relationship, and you're going to have to gently probe her to find out what it is to get her to open up and share with you so that those issues can be resolved so that she can finally close that file. Any more questions? Ah, I love my girl with all my heart, but I'm expressive. She knew that when we got together. It's uncomfortable when she tells me, how, <laughs> tells me what other spouses are doing to show love to their wives. I want to change, but not sure how to. Listening to you, I want to plan an outing. How do I get her to share without directly asking? Remember when I talked about decoding your, your girl? If you're dating somebody or if you're married to somebody, you gotta, you gotta watch them. You gotta know what they like, what they desire, what makes them tick. And when you know what makes them tick, you don't have to ask her directly what she wants. You know because you've been watching her. My husband knows what I like. He knows what's gonna minister to me. He ain't gotta come to me and say, Felicia, what do you want me to do for this day, for our anniversary? Felicia, what do you want for your birthday? Felicia, what? he didn't have to ask me. He knows that I love to build. I love to be in the garage. I love wood. So you ain't going to ask me if I want a saw. I want a saw. You ain't going to ask me if I want a table saw. I want the table saw. I want the chop saw. I want the jigsaw. I want the sander. I want the nailer. You got a whole list of things to buy for me. Because you know what I like. So when you study your girl, you find out what she likes, and you don't have to go and ask her directly. And this is going to really bless her because she's going to say, oh, my man knows what I like. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, my man loves me. Because you've taken time to learn her. You hit a home run. My boyfriend always wants to defend his actions. Seven months into the relationship, I'm ready to run because he doesn't listen. Is there hope for him? I didn't explain like you, but my words were close. If you keep defending, I'm not going to share. Help. Seven months into the relationship, you want to run because he doesn't listen. Okay. He can change. Uh, listening is something that can be developed. A lot of men don't know how to listen effectively. 
So it's, you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Now, this is the only issue that you have is that he doesn't listen. Then you guys can work on that. You guys can work on that. You're going to have to just spend more time explaining in a concise way. Because women, remember, men don't want no long, drawn-out stories. They don't want no long, drawn-out conversations. So whatever your issues are, if it's listening or him not listening, hit it. Explain to him what you need. Explain to him, show him what that looks like. Paint a word picture. Sometimes you have to make him see what, you, what your need is. Because if he can't see it, oftentimes he can't do what it is that you are asking him to do. So paint a word picture for him and let him understand exactly what this looks like to you. Now, if you get 14 months into the relationship and he still ain't listening after you done shared all of that, then you might want to reconsider. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you so much for watching The Love Loud. I hope you would tune in again. Guys, please, my husband will be back next Love Lab. So please make sure you tune in. And one more thing, keep an eye out for some things that are upcoming because you're going to be excited about what's coming up in 2021. So keep, keep watching and stay in tune. And thank you so much for being a part of The Love Lab. Thank you for joining our broadcast tonight. <laughs> Some great information. Uh, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. And we'll be back at the Love Lab, 7.30, uh, Friday night. I, see, I was watching, but then I went in and took a nap. Yeah, 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 you know, word, my head was hurting. <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll see you next time. Bye, y'all.